This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay. Good morning, Rabbi Isai. Baruch HaMabam to the Koylel Igra de Pirka here in Kew Garden Hills, New York. Parshas Vayakel Pekude. Parshas Vayakel Pekude is a review of the construction of uh, the Mishkan. So we know that Tfilois, Keneged, Karbonos, Tiknam. So we're going to speak about a very important Indian that is relevant to our daily Avoida. And the Gemara tells us in Masech Dabracha, it's Amar Le Yahu Mirabanan Rav Bibi Barabayi Ve'amri La Rav Bibi L'Rav Nachim Bar Yitzchak. Mai, what does the following Pasuk mean? Kirum Zulus Levnei Adam. Kirum Zulus Levnei Adam. Kirum, something very high. Zulus, which is treated lowly. Amar Le Elu Dvarim Sha'imdim Berumai Shalaylam Uvnei Adam Mezalzalin Bahem. These are matters that stand in the summit of the world, the pinnacle of the world, and people disparage them. People trample on them. People treat them very disrespectfully. What is this referring to? Says Rashi, Dvarim Sha'imdim Baruma Shalaylam, Kegoin Tfila. For example, Davening, Sha'ila Lamala. Davening, which rises all the way up to heaven, and yet people trample on it, people stumble on it people do not treat it with the reverence that it deserves. So let's begin by saying, what exactly are we referring to when we say that tefillah is something that people trample on? We are not talking about people who talk by davening. That's not called trampling on tefillah. That's called not davening. In fact, we're not talking about people that pull out phones by davening. That's not called trampling on davening. That's called not davening. They, if they would be very smart if they followed the advice of the Kafa Chaim, and that is, do not come to shul. Do not get up in the morning. Just stay in bed. You will get far more oilam haba if you sleep the entire morning than if you come to shul and you talk. You're not doing anybody no favors. You're not doing God no favors. And you're not doing the Jewish people any favors. You're causing damage to yourself and you're causing damage to the entire Jewish people. If you cannot control yourself and you feel you must talk by davening, you, have, you, don't, you don't need to come, don't come, don't harm the Jewish people. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking to God-fearing Jews who know what davening is, they appreciate what davening is. They would never pull out a phone by Pesukah de Zimra, they would never talk by Pesukah de Zimra, they would never talk by Kriya Satoira, they wouldn't even talk by Gavra le Gavra as the Halacha dictates. We're talking to good God-fearing Jews here in the Kailal Igra de Perka. And even so, the Gemara says, even people who know what davening is, still they trample on it, still they stumble on it. So in what way? In what way is davening not given the proper appreciation that it deserves? So let's begin with Parshas, uh, Pasuk and Parshas Yisrael, Parak Yotes, Pasuk Vav. Very important Pasuk, one of the most important Sukkim in the Chumash, if we're allowed to say such a thing. You will be for me a kingdom of priests, the Goy Kadosh and a holy nation. This is what you need to speak to the Jewish people. So Yvon Shem comes to Moshe, he says, Moshe, give Bnei Yisrael the following speech. Tell them, you guys are a kingdom of Kaihanim. Now, raise your hands if you're a Kayan. And the David is a Kayan, this gentleman is a Kayan. So we have two Kayanim here. What? Three Kayanim. And how many non Kayanim? The majority of us are not Kayanim. That means you guys are bat over arrive. It's only, you, Kilo, you're not even here. You know? Except for a Beria is not bat So, right? But actually, a, a Dover Choshev is not bat But still, how could the Yvon Shem tell Moshe Rabbeinu with a straight face? Go tell the Jewish people, you guys are a bunch of Kayanim. No, we're not. I mean, I have a tradition, I'm from Shevet Yehuda. I know I'm not a Koyen. If one thing I'm not, I'm not a Koyen. What is the Rebbe Shem's message? Go tell the Bnei Yisrael, they're Mamleches Koyhanim, a kingdom of priests. What does that mean? It says Rashi, look at number four. V'yatem tiuli Mamleches Koyhanim, Sarim. Sarim are princes. So Koyhanim doesn't mean priests. It means princes. Like it says, And the sons of David are Kaihanim. I just have one simple question. 
If God meant to tell us that we're a mamleches sarim, then guess what he could have said? He could have said, V'yatem t'yuli mamleches sarim v'goy kadosh. In fact, he could have saved the money. You know, every letter costs money. You go to the printer, the, every letter is going to cost you. So Yvon Shem could have saved himself a letter and told us the truth. V'yatem t'yuli mamleches sarim v'goy kadosh. Are you a printer? No, but uh, Jewish institutions make money by selling letters. <laughs> by selling letters. Yeah. yeah, but uh, in the long run, it's going to cost you. In the long run, it's going to cost you. Yeah, keep the safety. Yeah, the atem tilui. So what does Rashi mean, sarim? But ain mikro yoytzim edev shutai. Why the word choice of koyhanim? One thing we're not is we're not koyhanim. And we're bringing a raya, oh, just like it doesn't mean the right thing in this Pasuk, just like another Pasuk. So why in the Pasuk? One thing B'nai David are not, <laughs> the last thing that you're going to call B'nai David are Kayanim. <laughs> David Amel comes from Shevet Yehuda. The one thing they are not is they're not Kayanim. Ubnai Yahu, Ben Yehoyada, the Hakresi, the Haplesi, Uvnei David, Kayanim are you? They're not Kayanim. They're, what are they? They're Yisraelim. What is so? There also means Sarim. So if Hashem wanted to call them Sarim, I guarantee you the Rebbe Hashem could have written Uvnei David, Sarim Hayu. Why? It? Sarim, princes, royalty, of distinguished uh, disposition. But why Koyhanim? Koyhanim are priests. They are not B'nai Aroin. What do you mean? V'yatem tiuli mamleches Koyhanim. What does it mean Uvnei David, Koyhanim Hayu? There's also a Pasuk in Yeshaya. V'yatem koyhane Hashem tikra'ehu. And you, priests of God, you will be called. And you, priests of God, you will be called. What does that mean? What does that mean we are going to be called priests of God? Marv Rabbi said this is something you want to explore and hopefully bring out something uh, very critical and very crucial and bring out uh, an understanding and appreciation for davening. If we're able to integrate what we learned today, but as a Hashem, it will elevate our davening to a completely new level. Every day, we wake up. And what's the first thing we do when we wake up? We go back to sleep. No, just joking. What's the first thing we do when we get up in the morning? We wash Negovasar. Negovasar. So what do you do? You pick it up with uh, the right hand. You put it in the left hand. Right, left, right, left, right, left. Three times. You want to do it four times? Good. May I them three times? Fine. How many times in the morning are you washing your hands? The answer is you're supposed to wash them twice. Why? Because most people, after they get up in the morning, they got to take care of what they need to take care of. They're going to go to the facility. They're going to dress themselves and their hands. And then they wash their hands again. And what do they say when they wash their hands a second time? Al natilas. Yadayim, they make a bracha. And then they take bread and they make hamoitzi lechem in aretz, right? No, you're now to eat before davening. Right, you're not supposed to eat if a person is healthy. They're not permitted to eat before davening. The Rambam even darshans it from a pasuk, lo yisoichu al adam. Unless a person cannot concentrate without eating, they're not supposed to eat before davening. So you're making al natils yadayim. So that means when you eat bread after... After Shachris, you don't have to wash again? No, you do have to wash again. So why are you making a bracha of al natil siyadayim every morning? Negevaser, you washed, first thing. Natil siyadayim, what in the world are you making a bracha for? You're not eating bread. You ever think about that? Hope so. What's the reason you make an al natil siyadayim in the morning? This is the question of the Rajbah, the Chubas Harajbah, Chilak Aleph, Simen Kuf Tzadi Aleph. What? Ah, so says the Rajba in Chilak Aleph, Simon Kufzadi Aleph. Lama tiknu birchas antils yadayim b'shachris. Shebrachazu leiniskena ela ala pas. The brach antils yadayim is only for bread. Answers the Rajba. This is the Minog Yisrael to make nizos yadayim every morning. And we're makbid on this natila like a suda. So really, Rabbi Yisai, the best thing to do, you wake up in the morning, you wash Nagel Master, take care of what you need to, you get dressed. And either right before you leave your house, or when you get to shul, you wash your hands again, and you make the bracha on the tel siyadayim. Why? Says the Raja, Ani loy matsasi b'shem makayim davar mevurar she yitzdarech adam lito yadav shachas b'kli. 
Why do I need to wash my hands with a kli in the morning? If it's because of ruach ra, which is called shifta or bas melech, I don't need a kli, I just need water. If Elamai will say I need to have clean hands for davening, wrong, eh, eh, wrong answer. That's not why you wash your hands in the morning. Why? Because all you need is rechitza, all you need is to wash, or you could wipe it on a table or somewhere on a pebble. Like David HaMelech says, Erchatz v'nikoyoin kapai. All David HaMelech says is, I wash with cleanliness. You might not even need water, and you don't, you don't need a kli. So why in the world do we wash our hands with a kli in the morning? And if it's for davening, then you should make a bracha by mincha and marav as well. But they're not tefillahs. So there is a shita, maybe the, the rush, maybe, that you do make a bracha. We don't pass in that way. So don't you tell me it's for davening, because then you should make a bracha of all three tefillahs. Says the Rajba, every morning when you wake up in the morning, you're not you again, you're a new creation, you're a Beria Chadasha. Like the Pasuk says in Eicha, Chadashim Labakarim Raba Emunasecha. And therefore we need to thank Hashem that He created us to honor Him and to serve Him. And that's why we make all the Berchas HaShachar in the morning. Says the Rajba, Ulafikach anutzrichin lehiskadesh b'kdushasai. We need to sanctify ourselves in His sanctity. Velito yodeinu min akli. And wash with a kli. But what do you mean? For davening you don't need a kli? No! But every morning you're initiating and inaugurating your Avodah Hashem. And just like the Kaihanim and the Beis HaMikdash inaugurated and initiated their Avodah Hashem by washing from the Kiar, Kikoyin Shemekadosh Yadmin HaKiar, Kikoyin Avodah Hashem, so too, so too, we every morning, just like a Kayin who would inaugurate and initiate his Avodah Hashem by saying, you know what, this is a new day, this is a new opportunity to serve God, we need to have a ceremony to initiate and inaugurate the service by washing from the Kiar. Every Jew washes his hands in the morning with a kli, just like a Kohen in the Beis HaMikdash. So I have one very simple percha on the Rajba. What do you mean, just like a Kohen? But I'm not a Kohen. Let a Kohen wash his hands in the morning. But I'm a Levi, I'm a Yisrael, I'm from Shevet Zavulon, I'm from Shevet Yisachar. Why do, I, why do I need to wash my hands in the morning? What's the Rajba saying? The Rajba says the reason you have to wash your hands with a kli in the morning, make it until them, is like a koyin in the base of Mikdash. First of all, I'm not in the base of Mikdash. Second of all, I'm not a koyin. What in the world am I doing? Why do I need to mimic the koyhanim? Do I need to put on big day kahuna also? What's the Rajva talking about? This Again, this is a takana drabonon. Why is there such a takana? It doesn't seem to be reasonable. Let me tell you a halacha that I venture to say every single Jew has read in their lifetime. And I would venture to say, Kemat 99% of people misread it and are not Mekayim the Halacha. What's the Halacha? Simon Tzadi Dalet. Says the Shulchan Aruch, Tzorach Lechavein Neged Eretz Yisrael. One needs to, number eight, one needs to be Mechavein toward Eretz Yisrael. Fine. Bekumay lehispalo says the Shulchan Aruch. When you get up to daven, im haya oimed bechutzaretz. If you're in chutzaretz, raise your hand if you live in chutzaretz. Raise your hand if you're up. Okay, <laughs> right? So just joking, right? Raise your hand. So um, anyone who stands in chutzaretz to daven, yachzer pan of keneged Eretz Yisrael, should turn their face toward Eretz Yisrael. V'yichavein gam liushalayim. And be mechavin to Yerushalayim, ula mikdash, ula beis kadshei kadashim. I think most people would read this halacha to mean, make sure you're facing Eretz Yisrael, make sure you're facing Yerushalayim, make sure you're facing the Kadash kadashim. I just have one simple question for you. If you're facing Eretz Yisrael, guess what else you're facing? Then you're facing Yerushalayim, and you're facing the Kadash So you're just telling me, no, the guys in America... He's facing Tveria. So we're telling you, make sure you turn toward Yerushalayim the Kodesh The guy's facing Yerushalayim. No, you're not facing the Kodesh HaKadoshim. You tell me how that's possible in America to face Yerushalayim and not face the Kodesh HaKadoshim. I mean, you have to be pretty particular. 
You're going to have to get like some kind of electronic device then to angle you on that perfect angle. Is that what the halacha is saying? If you're standing in Eretz Yisrael, Yachser Panov, Kenegadu Shalayim. It doesn't say now, Yachser Panov, Lamikdash, Lebeis Kadash Kadashim. It says, V'yechavein Gam Lamikdash, Lebeis Kadash Kadashim. Haya Oymid Bishalayim, Yachser Panov, Lamikdash, V'yechavein Gam Ken Lebeis Kadash Kadashim. Says the Mishnah Bura. The Mishnah Bura is just reading the words of the Shulchan Aruch. There is no halacha to face the Kayash HaKadoshim, and there is no halacha to face Yushalayim. There's one halacha, face Eretz Yisrael. But you're Yechavein to the Yushalayim and the Kayash HaKadoshim, meaning, Ratzalayim are Yechavein Libay, Af Alpishi Yevshar Lahachser Pan of Negdam. Place focus in your heart. What is it? So now, I need to turn my attention toward Yushalayim and the Kayash HaKadoshim. So I would say that means, okay, I need to think about it. No, eh, wrong. It does not mean you think about it. Says the Mishnah Bura, Ratzolaymar, Sheyachshoyv, Beliboy, Virayoynoy, Kilo Oymed, Bemikdash, Asher, Birushalayim. It's a sif in Shulchan Aruch. That how do you daven Shman Esrei? Do you do not daven Shman Esrei thinking, facing Eretz Yisrael and thinking about Yerushalayim? The correct way to daven, this is not a chumrah, it's a halacha, that the way to daven Shemayna Esrei is you need to have a good imagination and imagine you're standing in the Kodesh HaKadoshim. You hear this? You ever realize this? You ever mekayim this? That when we daven Shemayna Esrei, you take your three steps back and you imagine you're davening the Shemayna Esrei in the Holy of Holies. So I have one simple question. I'm not a Kohen. And even if I was a Kohen, I'm not a Kohen Gadol. And even if I am a Kohen Gadol, today's Monday. And even if today's Yom Kippur, I don't have Ketairas. So what, what's the Halacha? You hear this? I'm supposed to imagine as if I'm standing in the Kosh HaKadoshim. So it comes out a very interesting thing, Rabbi Sai. That means every morning when I'm waking up, I'm not just landing directly in the Kodesh HaKadoshim. There's a progression, there's a process where I start off by washing my hands. Then until I I'm like the Kohen who washes on the Kiar on the outside. And somehow through the course of davening, I'm making my way into the Kodesh HaKadoshim. And this is something we're going to explore in great detail. Let's just establish the following rule. And then I'm going to hand you out your own personalized maps. Okay, so here we go. This comes from the Sefer Sharei Oira, which are the Shmuzin of Harav Avigdor Miller, Zechaz Haglavracha. I had the uh, honor and privilege to hear many of, of these ideas personally, and they're recorded in the Sefer Sharei Oira of Rav Vigdor Miller. Says Rav Miller, as the introduction to Kabbalah's Hatayra, the Ribbonisham gave us the following message Vi'atem tiyu li mamleches koyhanim begoy kadosh. When Hashem said those words, Ein mikra It's not a mashal, it's not a malitza, it's not an allegory, a simile, an analogy, you're like koyhanim. No, you are koyhanim. What is the definition of a koyin? Definition of a koyin is a clergy. What's a clergy? A clergy is somebody who their service of God is their profession. What the Rebbe was telling Klal Yisrael is, what I'm about to give you, I'm not giving you a hobby. Torah is not a hobby where, yeah, you, you make a living and you have family, so you might have a little bit of a spiritual emptiness, so you'll have a little you know, sanctity and spirituality on the side. No, I'm giving you a Torah's Chaim. What I expect of every Jew is every Jew is a clergyman. It doesn't mean every Jew is a rabbi, but what it means is a Jew views themselves as their main occupation in this world is service of Hashem. Be it when they pray, be it when they learn, be it when they work, be it when with their, they're with their family. They're clergy in that that is their primary occupation. As Rav Hashem says, Amzu Yatsar Tali, this nation I created for myself, Tihilasi Yisaperu, is for them to relate my praise. Therefore Hashem says, I want you to know, you may not be from the family of Aaron HaKoyen, that's irrelevant, the family of Arnakoyin are Koyhanim by genetic code. 
You are koyhanim by profession. That means all of your energy and all of your emotion and all of your intellect and all of your focus should be how to best serve Hashem. That is the job, that is the clarion call of the Jew. Like the Navi Yeshaya says, V'atem koyane Hashem tikru. Rav Miller brings this out in a very interesting way. Here's an example. Hashem comes to the Koyhanim and He tells them in in Vayikra Chafala Pasakei Lo Yikrechu Karcha Beroisham Ufa'as Zekanam Lo Yigalechu They can't make a bald spot, right? Uh, on their head. And they can't shave off their beard with a razor. Wait a second. That sounds awfully familiar. What's that got to do with Kaihanim? Nobody's allowed to shave off their beard with a razor. You know how to use a razor. People used to ask me, where, where on the face are you allowed to use a razor? Because we know there are five spots that you know how to use a razor. You can't use a razor anywhere because it's very unclear where the five spots are. So if the barber takes the razor and says, don't worry, I'm not going there, don't let him go there. Can use a razor. There are five spots. And if you knew exactly where, technically you could. But because we don't know exactly where, it's off limits. The face is off limits with a razor. By the way, and even a scissor is not permitted in under all circumstances. Let me explain. In the area of the payas, now there's no halachic requirement to have payas. That's, you know, a, a minog of chasidim, of svardim. But even so, you have to be careful. The length, the pay here has to be a certain length. It's machloikis, how long it is to double it over or to be able to pull it. But some people like to get very close crew cuts. In this area, above the bone line, even with a scissor, some people like to get a very clean look. You can't do it even with a scissor. So there are two separate halachas. One is the five places on the beard. And then the pa'as roishcha is even the sheet of the rush that we're machmer like is even not with a razor, even a scissor, I'm not talking about a shaver, even a scissor, you can cut too close. Okay, but be it as it may, why is Hashem telling the koyhanim not to use a razor on their face? And then Hashem repeats it to all of Klal Yisrael. What's the concept of that? Just say to all of Klal Yisrael, don't shave your faces. The point that Rebbe Hashem is trying to get across is, He's trying to make the Jewish people feel, if I first tell the koyhanim they can't do this, and then I tell it to all of Klal Yisrael. This way Klal Yisrael understands and appreciates the truth is, everyone is a Kayhain. Everyone has the status of clergy. Therefore there are a number of mitzvahs which were given specifically to the Kayhanim and then repeated to everyone. I'll give you another example. In the parsha of Shechting Karbanois, Shechitas uh, Kachim, it says in Devarim Parak Yudbeis, and it says, If you live too far from the base Hamikdash to bring carbonos, you know what you're going to do? You're going to eat steak in your backyard and have a barbecue. Okay, is that a carbon? No, that's a barbecue. So why in the context, Hashem says, come to the Beis HaMikdash, bring Karbanos Shlamim, bring Karbanos. Oh, you can't make to the Beis HaMikdash? So bring, eat meat in your backyard. What is eating meat in the backyard? That's a substitute to Karbanos? Yeah. Because the truth is, that Hashem wants you to feel that even your ordinary everyday barbecue has a bechina, is a level, is a me'ain, is a shemetz of achilas kodshim. It may not be in the Beis HaMikdash with actual kaihanim, with real priests wearing the garments, but nevertheless, it has a quasi-status of achilas kodshim. Meaning the Rebbe Hashem wants a Jew to feel every yid, no matter what your lineage is, it doesn't matter what your DNA is, it doesn't matter what shevet you come from, Every Jew should feel that in some level they have a status of a koyen. Like the Rajba says, that every morning when you wake up in the morning, you wash your hands like a koyen who's about to do the avoida. Yeah, but I'm just a plain old Yisrael. I can only get shlishi. So the first thing is, I'll tell you, there's a certain shul that I know, the rabbis of Yisrael, and he gets the first aliyah every week. I'm not sure how, but you know, so we could work something out for you. But even if, you know, in your shul, you'll never get the first aliyah, it doesn't matter. You're still considered in a very significant way. You have a status of a clergy. You have a status of a koyen. 
Let's talk about the following idea. This is what Miller would talk about all the time. You know, you wake up in the morning and you make a bracha. By the way, why don't we say Hashem gives hearing to the deaf? Why don't we say Hashem gives taste to the tasteless? Why don't we say Hashem gives um, touch to the feelless? Why, of all the five senses, do we only mention sight? Very Pashat. Because you're waking up. During the course of the night, you could hear, Yanko, what, what, what? What do you mean, what? He was asleep. How did he hear? Because you could hear when you're sleeping. You give, you wake, you hit somebody in the face. Uh, he wakes up, why? You could feel when you're sleeping. You could taste when you're sleeping. You could smell when you're sleeping. The only thing you can't do when you're asleep is your eyes are closed. So you open your eyes. That's the one sense that you have back now. You could see. Do we say Poikeach Ivre Amo Yisrael? No. Because Hashem gives sight to all mankind. Do we say Roika Haretz Al Hamayim Li Yisrael? No. Because Hashem gives dry land to all of all of mankind. Do we say Matira Sure Yisrael? No. All mankind they could stretch out their limbs. And comes the Pasuk Oiter Yisrael Besafara. God gives a crown to the Jewish people with glory. Why do we mention Yisrael? What is Yisrael? What, only Jews wear hats? No. Even Goyim wear hats. Maybe they, you know, um, they could wear a cowboy hat, or they could wear a jet hat. If it's a Yankee hat, you know it's a Jew though. But, what, why do we say Yisrael by a hat? Why by a hat do we say so according to the Rush, it refers to Tefillin. In fact, the Rush would make Oiter Yisrael, he would yimash ish b'tfilin. But according to many Rishonim, it's not only going on the Tefillin, it's going on the traditional Jewish head cover, be it a yarmulke, which is to promote Yer Shamayim, Yare Malka, or be it a hat that many Jews wear. But nevertheless, if you look carefully at the language, uh, that the, the adjective describing the Jewish hat, Oiter Yisrael b'sifara, with glory. Why is the hat called glory? What's so glorious about the hat? Well, the simple reason why a hat is glorious is it makes a person look taller, it makes a person look more distinguished, it gives a person a certain distinction, but it's the same terminology used by the hats of the Kayin. Pare migbois, hats of glory. Drawing your attention to the fact that even if you're not wearing a migbav, a kayin, even if you're just wearing a yarmulke, or you're wearing a hat, nevertheless, be'ini Hashem, if your head covering, whether it's your yarmulke, whatever color it is, or whether it's your hat, if you're wearing a hat as a sign of identifying with the Jewish people, then that is your crown of kahuna. That is your crown of glory. So if you see a yeshiva bachar wearing a black hat, don't say, oh, he's a black hatter. No, he's royalty. That's a sign that he's a clergy. That's a sign that he has dedicated his life to Avodah Hashem. That's why we make a bracha. Oiter Yisrael. It's specific for the Jewish people. Why is it specific? All of mankind could wear a hat. The Pope wears a, All of, what? The Pope wears a yarmulke. He wears a yarmulke? Yeah. He wears a red one. But he doesn't have to, he doesn't have to make the bracha, Oiter Yisrael B'Savar. I don't, I don't think. know. What? what? I don't think he has to make that bracha. L'chayr, he's potter from that. Or, Marv Rabbi you make a bracha, Oizer Yisrael Bigvura. God girds the Jewish people with strength. What is that referring to? A belt. Yeah, but all a mankind has to wear, uh, wears a belt. Why does it, what does that have to do with the Jewish people? Clothing is not Malbush Arume Yisrael. So why is a belt, Oizer Yisrael Bigvura? The answer is because a Jew needs to wear a belt to separate between their heart and the erva. Right? It's a halacha. You have to wear a belt during davening to separate between your heart and the erva. So now it's just to establish a halacha. The halacha is, do you have to wear a belt by davening? Technically, yes. However, Mishnabura brings down that if a person's undergarment has a, an elastic band that's considered tight around the waist, that serves the function as a separation between the heart and the erva. 
Do you need to wear an additional belt? So the Mishnah Brewer says, no. Unless the following. If a person normally wears a belt throughout the day, and for whatever reason they happen to have taken it off, they're obligated to put it back on for davening. However, if you don't wear a belt the whole day, you don't have to wear a belt for davening. Chassidim are makbid to wear a belt regardless. But al pi ikar hadin, al pi halacha, there has to be some separation which is covered by the undergarment and you just can't take it off for davening. If you don't ever wear a belt, you don't have to put it on. That's the psaka of the Mishnah Bura. In fact, what Moshe says that um, to wear a gartel on top of your belt in the Rishas Harabim is carrying. It's a uh, it's Haitsa Dairaisa. So Moshe says, because you don't need it. What do you need it for? It's not, it's, uh, it's not a garment. It's not a garment. What? It's a chonah. He says more. It's carrying, he says. It's, uh, it's carrying. So Moshe says you'd have to wear it on top of a jacket. Top. Yeah, Ramosha doesn't go, he doesn't say it's a top. He said, Ramosha would say, Ramosha says that you'd have to put it on top of your jacket. But if it's under your, if it's under your jacket, on top of the belt, then it has no, it's not doing it, right? Is that a minig or is that a din? What? A gato? No, so I'm just, I'm saying, I'm just it's telling you. Minig. This is not a minig. This is not a, so, a din. There are two, so that's what I said. The din is just to have a separation. The minog the, of those who have the minog is. What? Where does it say that they have that, separation? That's a, that's a pus. That's a, it might be a din doi rice. So. It says, Velibi, Velibi, Ra. Harbei Chachma. My heart saw a lot of wisdom. So from there we see the heart could see. So if the heart could see, so we darshan, the heart is not supposed to see the erva. Okay. But be it as it may, Rav Miller says, that means the belt is analogous to the avnate of the koyen. When a person davens and he has a belt on, he may not be of lineage of a koyen, but nevertheless the belt that he wears is analogous to the belt worn by the koyhanim in the Beis HaMikdash. And therefore when the Rebbe Shalom says, It's not a mashal, it's not a melitza, there is a very significant truth to it. And that is, the Rebbe Shalom is endowing every Jew with the status of priesthood and of being clergy. Marv Rabbi here we go. We've already established at the beginning of davening, when you wash your hands from the Natil Siyadayim, you're like a Kayin who washes his hands from the Kiar. By the end of davening, when you're davening Shemana Esrei, you're not focused on Kaidash HaKadoshim, you're in the Kaidash HaKadoshim. But there's a lot of space between the Kiar and the Kaidash HaKadoshim. So what I would like to give out to you is your own personalized color copy of the Mishkan, and through the Sefer of Rav Shimon Schwab, we're now going to go through something which is Oyem ben Oyer, half of a fella, how each part of tefillah corresponds specifically to a different part and place in the Mishkan. Okay, and that's what I would like to um, share with you. So everyone should have their own copy. Okay, so it's uh, colored. Okay, pass them around, pass them around. Yeah, taking is optional and passing is mandatory. Okay, here we go. This comes from the Sefer Ion Tfila, the, the Ion Tfila of Rabbi Shimon Schwab in the Psicha. And says Rabbi Schwab, Tfila is one, is one of the things in this world that a person eats the fruits in Oil Mazah, that a person could be kind of very great madregos. Did you get one? Very great levels from contemplating their tefillah, but the ultimate reward lasts for Olam Haba. That the Lashon of a tefillah accomplishes, it's mekarev a person to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Even the word carbon, carbon is the Lashon of Hiskarvos, as the Ramban says in Vayikra, Parak Aleph, Pasuk Tes, to the point where the Gra asks that if tefillah is so great, then why do we need to daven? What do we need it for? We could just daven. Why do we say Unashalma Params Faseno that let our lips fulfill our quota of carbonois? Why do we need to fulfill a quota of carbonois? What is the mail of actually bringing a carbon? Well, the Gras says 
That yes, tefillah brings a person closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but tefillah is only forgives the sin, but the, there is still some remnant and some mark of the sin that only a carbon could erase. But be it as it may, the function and the accomplishment of a tefillah is its makarev adam l'hakadosh baruch hu. So Marv Rabbi as we started out, we mentioned that you wake up in the morning and you wash your hands from the kiar. But let's uh, begin our voyage in the Ezras Nashim. Okay? The Ezras Nashim. What took place in the Ezras Nashim? The Gemara in Sukkot says on Daphne Aleph, Amen Aleph, in the Ezras Nashim was the Simchas Beis HaShoeva. What else took place in the Ezras Nashim? Once every seven years, the king would read Mishnah Torah. When? On Matzah Yom Tov of Sukkot. You have to understand. Okay, so what did they do during the rest of the seven years? It was empty. We say in Tehillim, Hine Barchu Es Hashem. Kal avde Hashem, ha'oyimdim beveis Hashem, baleilois. We say, bless God, all you servants of Hashem, who stand in the house of God at night. Who stands in the house of God at night? The kaihanim? You're not a duavoyde at night. Who is standing in the house of God at night? The carbon tamid was not shechted until they saw the sun. The answer is, the righteous People, the Anche Maisa, would gather there in the evening, in the nighttime, to learn, to say Tehillim. And therefore, this was a Makayim Limud the whole year, and that's why it was chosen as the place where the Kayan would read Mishnah Torah once every seven years. Keneged, the king, thank you. Keneged, this Makayim in the Ezra's Nashim are all the Tefillahs in the beginning of Davening. Adoy Noilam, Netios Yodayim. All the trinois and bakashas, trina, not what you dipped, not one of the dips. Supplications, right? All of the introductory tfilois of davening are keneged the Ezras Nashim. When you open up the Siddur and you say all those bakashas in the beginning of the Siddur, you are virtually in the Ezras Nashim. Fine, that's number one. Marvra Boisai, take a look at your copy. How many steps go up from the Ezras Nashim to the Shar Niknar? 15. Keneged the 15 steps. You have 15 berachas hashacha. That's a vina lavo miyom elosh. That's an igosh. That's an yavosh. That's an yishev. B'gachim mal b'shem b'avater asurim b'gachim. Right. So you give room like a moyim. You have mat. All the 15 berachas hashacha are keneged the 15 steps from the Ezra's Noshim to the Shar Niknar. As you're saying the berachas hashacha, you virtually imagine yourself ascending from the Ezra's Noshim up to the Shar Niknar. But now here's where it gets scary. Because within the Shar Niknar, so um, Rabbi said, I broke up the Eon Tefillah for you into little bite-sized pieces to make it more user-friendly. Okay? I don't want anyone to strain their eyes so it's more consumable. So we're up to Ois Gimel. Now you're up to the Shar Nik- Nik- Niknar, um, to the Azara, which is the Machina Shechina. Now in the Shar Niknar, which is a machina shechina. There it's aser for any of the umais to enter. Okay, we know midday rai, so goyim are not allowed in to the Ezras Yisrael. So that's a very dangerous place. But we say it doesn't matter. And all Gentiles are out. That's why, where are we up to in davening? We say, Kol hagi boyrim ka'ayin lefanecha. All those mighty ones from the other nations are like nothing. Va'anshe Hashem, all the renowned goyim, it's as if they never existed. And therefore we prepare ourselves to separate from the Gentile world. Where is this screening process conducted? At the entrance of Shar Niknar. So you can imagine, this is a dangerous place because Tony and Jason and Luke they're left behind there. And, all, and these Yiddelach are walking in and they're saying, Tony's saying, where are you going? He's saying, Tony, you're a nice guy. You stay outside. You make the pizza outside. We're going in. You can't go in. We say, So the Goyim, they're getting very upset. They take out their weapons. So we scream out, Oy vay! Shema Yisrael Hashem Lekeinu Hashem Achad Baruch Atah Hashem Mekadish Mai Barabim we're going in at all costs. We don't know what the repercussions are going to be, but this is the Ad Khan Vesulai. None of the nations of the world are allowed entrance. That's why it's at this place in Davening. We speak about 
the the Ke'ayin lefanecha of the Umay Sa'olam. We speak about our elite status, Avla Nachnu, Amcha Bnei Brisecha, and we make the bracha Al Kedush Hashem. Marv Rabbi Isai, we've now entered Ezra Yisrael. Ezra Yisrael, the first 11 Amos in the Azara are called the Ezra Yisrael. What's going on in the Ezra Yisrael? It's basically a gathering of all of Klal Yisrael could go there. It's a kibbutz Goliath. It's Kibbutz Bnei Yisrael. Therefore we say the Tanad Velio, Ato Hashem Lekeinu, and we're Mespalel on Kibbutz Goliath. And we say the Pasuk in Sefani, Yobay Yisrael, 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 L'Shem, L'Sehila, B'chal Amei Oretz, B'Shuvi, Yashvuseichem, L'Einechem, Omar Hashem. It's in the, the Tfilois that correspond to the Ezra Yisrael are the Tfilois of Kibbutz Goliath. It's a Tfilah of the ingathering of the exiles and the gathering of the Jewish people. Now we move on. Where are we up to now? We're in the area of the Azara called Ezra's Kayanim before the Mizbeach. Interesting, take a look. We're, you're, we're about to ascend three steps of the Duchan. According to Rav Lezer ben Yaakov, in the Sech Damidais, this there were three steps on the Duchan. This is the place where the Kayanim stood to be Mavarich the Am. And there were three steps there. Keneged, these three steps are the three Berchas HaToyra. What are they? Lasek B'Devei Toyra. V'harev na Asher Bachar Banu. Corresponds to the three Pesukim Berchas Kohanim, Yivarechecha, Yoyar, and Yisa. And corresponds to Toyra, Mishnah, Gemara. Braisa. So those are the three steps going up from the Ezra's Yisrael to the Ezra's Kohanim. We now encounter the Mizbeach, the Mizbeach HaChitzoyin. And guess which part of Davening corresponds to Mizbeach HaChitzoyin? Ezehu Mekoyman Shel Zvachim. Very simple. The parak in Zvachim. The only parak with no Machloikas in it. The parasha, the parasha Satamid, and the parak of Ezehu Mekoyman, which is the Seder of the other Karbanais. Okay. We're now what? Not in the same setup. What do you mean? Not going in the setup which we are doing today. No, why? In what way? Because the time is at the beginning. Because the Torah we say before. Okay. Oh, you mean the Berkha Torah we say before, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Pretty good. Alright, so. The, so. So the Mizbeach corresponds to Ezehu Mekoyman Shalzvachim. Now we're beyond the Mizbeach, and we're in an area called Bein Ha'ulam Ve Ha'mizbeach, between the Ulam and the Mizbeach. How many steps are there from the Azara going up to the Ulam? No? Look in your map, Where? on your personal colored copy of the Mishkan. How many steps are there? Where? Twelve, but plus the floor of the Azara is a thirteenth. So where are we up to in Davening? Rabbi Shmuel Oimer, B'Sholosh Esri Midois, HaToyer Nidrash Esbahem. And we've pointed out many times, why in the world are we reciting a Bryce of Rabbi Shmuel? To Darshan, the 13 hermeneutic principles with, of exegesis. You know, it's one thing, you want to say the Bryce of Rabbi Shmuel before you learn Gemara, you know, Tenach, that makes sense. But why are you saying, Yud Gimel Midois, HaToyer Nidrash Esbahem, before you're davening? You're not about to learn Gzei Shava. So we've said many times, look at number 12, the Malbim in the Sefer Eretz Chemda, on Parshas Baha the Malbim says that an amazing idea, amazing concept that comes from the Mikubalim, especially the Arizal. Moshe Rabbeinu Davins, when uh, Miriam has Taras, Moshe Rabbeinu cries out, Kel no Rifanala! He invokes the Midah of Kel. And what's Rebbe Hashem's response? <laughs> Rebbe Hashem says, "In Mavia, Yarak Yarak Defaneha, Haloi Sikalim Shivas Yamim, Tisager Miriam Shivas Yamim." Basically, Rebbe Hashem makes a kavachaymer. He says, "If her father would have spit in her face, she would have had to been locked up seven days. All the more so, she should be locked up seven days twice." Explains the Malbim. Moshe Rabbeinu is trying to invoke the Midah of Kale. The Midah of Kale is the the first of the Yud Gimel Midos Harachimim, according to that Rizal. According to the Rishonim, the Yud Gimel Midos Harachimim starts, 
Hashem Hashem Kel Rachem Achanon. But according to the Ari, Hashem Hashem is an introduction to Yid Gimel Midas Rachamim. The first Yid Gimel Midas Rachamim is Kel. The Mikubalim say that the way to invoke the Mida Arachamim is to utilize the corresponding principle of Mida Yishatar and Adreshes Vahem. So if you learn the first of Yid Gimel Midas Arachamim, you'll be able to arouse the first Yid Gimel... Uh, if you utilize the first Yid Gimel Mida Yishatar and Adreshes Vahem, you'll be able to arouse the first Yid Gimel Midas Arachamim. So Moshe Rabbeinu Davin's Kel Na Rufan Allah. Hashem says, you want to wake up Kel? You need to learn Kavachaymer. Therefore, Tefillah, which is Rachamim, the introduction to that is Rabbi Shemal Oimer, Bishalai Shesre Midai Satar Nidreshes Bahem. And therefore, there are 13 steps 12 of the Ulam plus the floor of the Azara itself that corresponds to Brisa to Rabbi Shemal. Mark Rabbi say now we're really getting started. Now, don't make the mistake. This is a very big mistake that people make. That they hear a shear, oh, this is so important! And they make the tafel the ikr, and the ikr the tafel. Whatever we said now is all introductory to tefillah. You cannot say these things at the expense of not davening Shemana Esrei with the tzibur. Davening Shemana Esrei with the tzibur means starting Shemana Esrei with the tzibur. The main purpose of going to shul is to bow Baruch Atah Hashem together with everybody else. If you're being bogged down because you're saying Adoy Noilam, or you're saying Karbanois, or you're even saying parts of Sukkot Zimra, you need to skip to be able to start Shemana Esrei with the Tzibar. That's the main, the main thing that, a, that should be on a person's mind when they come to Shul is, I would like to be able to start Shemana Esrei with the Tzibar. So yes, everything here is the progression, but now we're up to the, the Ikar of Davening. And now we're up to Sukkot Zimra. Now Sukkot Zimra you can't skip. The main part of Sukkot Zimra, Baruch Sha'amar, Ashrei, Yishtabach, you cannot skip. Other parts of Sukkot Zimra, you would be able to. Where the Ulam, the Ulam corresponds to Sukkot Zimra. What is the main part of Sukkot Zimra? Baruch Sha'amar. What's the conclusion of Sukkot Zimra? Yishtabach. The entrance of the Ulam is Baruch Sha'amar. The entrance of the Heichal is Yishtabach. They parallel each other. By the way, they both have 13 praises. Baruch Shammah has 13 Baruchs, Yishtabach has 13 praises. They're exactly the same. Interesting, the Ulam itself are the Shvach, the Shvachim, be it Haidu, be it Yehi Chavayid, be it Mizmar Lasaida, be it the Halalukas. Now it's very interesting. If you look in Mesech Damidais, in Paragimel, Mishnah Ches, what hung down from the ceiling of the Ulam Golden chains. By the way, what were those golden chains for? The young Kohanim would climb up, climb up and down the train, chains, and on the top they would see the crowns. What crowns would they see? They would see the crowns of Mashiach. There were two crowns there. One went on the, cra- the head of Yeshua Kohen Gadol. One went on the head of Zerubbabel, who was supposed to be Mashiach. He didn't become Mashiach, but Mashiach, who is a Gilgal of Zerubbabel, will wear that crown. The comparison to Pesukah de Zimra is one to chains. Why? Pesukah de Zimra is one Mizmar chained to the next. If you study the davening carefully, we would appreciate why Haidu flows into Mizmar Lasaida, flows into Yichavayit, flows into the first Ashrei, flows into the next Hallelujah. Pesukah de Zimra is a chain of events, a chain of praises that are connected to each other. And maybe one day we'll be zaycha to understand the flow of the tefillah. But it, the Baruch Sha'amar is the entrance of the Ulam, Yishtabach is the entrance of the Heichal, and the Psukah de Zimra itself are the chains that hang down. Marv Rabbi now it's showtime. Now we're up to Berchaz Kriyashma. And Berchaz Kriyashma corresponds to the Heichal. And you come to the Heichal. And on the right side of the Heichal, what do you see? The Shulchan. And on the left side of the Heichal, what do you see? The Menorah. And right in the center, you see the Mizbeach HaKetoyras. The Rambam says, there are two ways of understanding Hashem in this world. There are two ways to come to an Hakarav Hashem. You could study God in creation. 
You could study God in science. You could study God in biology. You could look at the human body and appreciate the wonders of Hashem. You could appreciate the fact that the liver actually stores up minerals and a year later when you need it, it knows exactly when to release it. Uh, the liver is able to take in medication and deliver it to the whole body. It's a miracle. The heart. The heart pumps 70 times a minute. Okay, we're going to do an exercise now. Everybody, open your hands. You ready? Pump your hands. Let's go. 70 times a minute. Let's go. 70 times. 70 times. 70 times. 70 times. Let's go. Okay. Who could do it? Who could do it? Who could do it without passing out? Who could do it? 70 times. 70 times. 70 times. You cannot do it for 10 minutes. It's impossible. And it's, you're not even pumping the fist so hard. So how is it possible for the heart as a muscle to pump 70 times every minute, 60 minutes an hour, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, without stopping? There's no machine in the world that can handle that. What are you eating already? How many burgers are you eating to, to fuel that? What are you eating? Who's, what are you... Your gasoline, you're pouring gasoline, oil. Well, what's going on? How is, it, nor, how is it possible that a muscle pumps all day for years and years and years? A car engine doesn't last that long. How is it possible? The, one of the ways of perceiving HaKadosh Baruch Hu is by looking at the human body, looking at nature. Question for you. Question is... How do you get blood, how do you get oxygen into your blood? So basically, the blood goes into the heart. The heart pumps the blood to the lungs. The lungs take in the oxygen. And the oxygen goes into the blood, and then the blood is sent to the rest of the body. Yeah? So I have a question. A baby doesn't breathe. Baby doesn't breathe. Baby doesn't breathe. How does it get oxygen in its blood? So it goes straight from the mother's, the oxygen in the mother's blood goes straight to the baby. So wait, wait a second then. Then in a baby, does the blood get pumped up to the lungs? No, it doesn't. In the baby, it doesn't get pumped up to the lungs. So where does it go? There's a hole in a baby's heart that the blood goes from one, aor, one uh, ventricle, from one chamber, atria, to the next. There's a hole in the baby's heart. So when does the baby have surgery to close up the hole? Right? Because in a baby there's no reason for the blood to go to the lungs, so it doesn't. It goes from one area on the heart to the next because there's a hole in the baby's heart. So when does the surgeon repair the hole? Oh, we don't need a surgeon. So who closes up the hole? The moment the baby is born, the baby cries. That cry creates so much pressure in the baby's chest, the hole seals shut forever. No surgery required, and you don't have to deal with insurance. Right? You don't have to deal with insurance. Mamish Nisim and Aflois. One of the ways to see HaKadosh Baruch Hu is to study science, to study nature. That's represented by the Shulchan. The Shulchan is represented by Oilam Hazeh, the table. Oilam Hazeh is the Shulchan. That's the first brach of Kriyashima. Yoitzer Or Uboirei Choyshech. Oyseh Shalom Uboirei Es HaKoyl. That is the first brach of Kriyashima, the Shulchan. Oilam Hazeh. But there's an even greater way to appreciate HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The Rambam says, what's the best and highest way to appreciate HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Through the Torah. Through the Torah, a person is makir, misha, amar, v'haya, oilam. You know, one would think that studying science would bring a person a greater recognition of HaKadosh Baruch Hu than studying Torah. No. Even though studying science brings a person a great recognition, not as great as studying Taira. Somehow, by learning Taira, it gives a person more of the spiritual recognition of HaKadosh Baruch in this world. That corresponds to Ahav Arab or Avas Oilam. That's the Menorah, the light of the Menorah, the light of the Taira is represented by the bracha of Ahav As Oilam or Ahav Araba. So there are these two ways of recognizing God. The Shulchan, Briyas HaOlam, science, or the Menorah, the Torah, the recognition of the one who gave us the Torah's Chaim. That's the Shulchan and the Menorah. But Moiv Rabbi say now we're dead center. 
And dead center is the Mizbeach HaKetoyres. And what do you offer on the Mizbeach HaKetoyres? On the Mizbeach HaKetoyres, they offer the physicality of the animal. On the Mizbeach HaKetoyres is the scent. The scent is what gives the Neshama pleasure. The Mizbeach HaKetoyres corresponds to the offering of the soul. What part of davening does that correspond to? Ve'ahavta, es Hashem alaykecha, v'chol levavcha, v'chol nafshecha, v'chol meyodecha, that's mezbeach ha-ketoyres. After all, we know when one says Shema, they're mechaven to be moiser nefesh al-kedash Hashem, that they would give up their life for the Rebbein Hashem. Kariya Shema corresponds to the mezbeach ha-ketoyres. But I'm not a koyin! That's what you thought. That's what you thought you're not a koyin. Until the Rebbein Hashem picked you up by your lapel, and he said, V'yatem tiyu li mamlechus koyhanim! You are a koyin! You say Shema every day. You say, you, you say, Brachas Kriya Shema. You say, you see the Shulchan, you see the Menorah, you say, Yotzar Barei Choshech, you say, Ahav Arabi, you're a koyin! Just because you can't go into the physical Mishkan, but into the Mishkan Hashem, into the Mishkan of Tefillah, into the Mikdash Shomala, Every single day we're all given entry. You are a Kayin. No, it's not a Moshal. It's not a Melitza. It's not an analogy. It's not a simile. It's Pshutai Kamash Loi. You wash your hands in the morning. Where are you going? You're going to the Beis HaMikdash. How are you getting there? What do you mean, how am I getting there? First I start the Tfilois. I start on the Ezra's Nashim. I say the 15 Berchaz HaShachar. I climb up the Chamesh Esri Malois. Now I have, uh, I say, Mekadosh Mei Barabim, I'm in the Shar Niknar. Now I say the Psukim of Kibbutz Nidchei Yisrael and the Ezras Yisrael. Now I'm up to the Duchen Berchas HaToyra. Now Ezel Mekoyim and Shal Zvachim. I say, Rabbi Shmuel Oimer, I climb up the 13 steps. Baruch Shamar, I'm in the Ulam. Psuk the Zimra, the chains of the Ulam. Yishtabach, the entrance of the Heichal. First I go to the Shulchan, that's Yotzer Avarich Hoshech. Then I go to the Menorah, that's Avarabah. Then I go to the Mizbech HaKtores. I have one more bracha to go. What bracha? Yeah, Gal Yisrael. Yeah. Gal Yisrael is Good. the highest revelation of Hashem's presence where Hashem says, I'm going to redeem you and you're going to point to me and you're going to say, Zekeli v'anbeyu, you're going to see Geula. That's the paraychas. That's the paraychas. And right after the paraychas, without any hefzik, the Aroin is the Kodesh Akdashim. What's the Kodesh HaKadoshim? Shemana Esrei. So you say, what? What's the, what does the Mishnah Bura mean that when I dive in Shemana Esrei, I'm supposed to imagine myself standing in the Kodesh HaKadoshim? What does he mean? He means what he says he means. There's, there's not an allegory, there's not like a Dvar Torah, a Jerusha. Oh, I have a great Jerush to tell you that when you dive in Shemana Esrei, you should imagine. No. This is just the culmination of an appreciation, understanding of what is transpiring during Tefillah, look in Ois Yud Beis over here. Right after, uh, excuse me, Ois Yud Aleph, Yachikach Nigashim Leparoiches, which corresponds to Emes V'yatsev, which is the entrance to the Shemayna Esrei, that you mentioned, Gulas Mitzrayim, where the Shechina was revealed, and uh, this is where we see, Anihu V'layacher. Okay, now we're in the Kodesh HaKadoshim, and therefore we cannot be Mavsik, Bein Gula, Letfilah, and this is the meaning of the Mishnah Bura and the Halacha, Yechavin Keneged Beis Kodesh HaKadoshim. This is the thesis of Rav Shimon Schwab in his Psicha to the Sefer Ion Tfila, where each part of davening corresponds very precisely to a different part of the Mishkan. But I will share with you that Rav Schwab is not the only one who advances this idea. In the Siddur of Rav Yaakov Emdin, over each part of davening. Meaning, if you look at Rabbi Yaakov Emden Siddur, I recommend everybody getting one. So, after, by each part of davening, it will say over here, where in the Mishkan you are. Like in the middle of the page on the top, it will say, now you're, now you're in the Ezra's Nashim, now you're in the Ezra's Yisrael, now you're in the Tzafai, now you're in Ben Ulam Ezrayach, and by Shemana Esri, it will say, now you're in the Kodesh HaKadoshim. So I just made a copy for you, uh, just a small collection, uh, Rav Yaakov basically learns um, similarly to Rav Schwab. Take a look at number 14. Rav Yaakov Emden says, the Ezra's Noshim is where you say Berchus HaShachar. Okay, pretty similar. We said it's the 15 steps. The Ezra's Yisrael is the Akedah. 
until Anam Kayach. The Ezra's Kayanim is the Seder Havoida. Safa in Hoazara is Ezel Makayman. The Malo is Shabbat Ulam Azach is Rabbi Shmuel, just like Rabbi Schwab. Yeah. The Ulam is Baruch Shemat Yishtabach. The Heichal is Baruch Krishma. And the Kayish HaKadoshim is Shmane Esrei. Comes the Malbim. And the Malbim says even furthermore. The Malbim says, you read Parshas Tetzaveh, and you read about the, the big day kahuna, and you think, eh, it's irrelevant. So one guy has to wear a nice begadim, and I have to spend an extra 45 minutes in shul, because this rabbi is wearing nice clothing, what's that got to do with me? Let him, if, let him come to shul and hear about his clothing, I have to hear about his clothing. Says the Malbim, it's a mashal. The big day kahuna, the begadim of the nefesh, the attitudes, the midas, the perspectives, the garments with which you clothe your neshama in order to properly serve Hashem. And each one of these begadim is a different mida and a different idea and a different perspective to have as you approach the Rebani Shalaylam. Marva Aboisai! You'll say, come on. You're fine, you want to say I'm a kayin, but now you're telling me not only am I a kayin, I'm a kayin gado. Every morning I'm going into the Kodesh HaKadosh of Kohen Gadol. Let me share with you Baal HaTurim. Baal HaTurim says, V'atem tihiyuli mamleches koyhanim. Says the Baal HaTurim, Ilu zachu Yisrael, if the Jewish people would have merited, Hayukulam koyhanim gedoylem. They all would have been koyhanim gedoylem. Ula asid lavai tachzer lahem. La asid lavai it will return to them. La'asid lavai, not only will every Jew be a kayin, every Jew will be a kayin gadol. So you say, how is that possible? So I would say, bala turim, not only in the future will every year be a kayin gadol, every morning every year is a kayin gadol. Every morning a year is going into the Kodesh HaKadoshim. Marv Raboisai, let me ask you a question. You ever see people down in Shemana Esrei? So they take three steps back like this. What is that? What would be wrong if you actually bowed correctly? Or, Maidim. Maidim go like this. No, no, Maidim is Ad Sheyis Pakaku Kol Cholios Shabashidra. means you bow down until all the vertebrae are bent. You lift up your head and you go like that. So, why are people going like, you know, walking all over the place, bowing, shaking? Why can't they do it right? They don't take it seriously. I guarantee you the, the Kayin Gada, when he did the Avoid in the base of Mikdash, if he had to take a certain number of steps, he was counting every step. So why when a person takes three steps back, can't they be medactic? That the toe is by the heel. And the, why is it just haphazard? Because we don't appreciate the fact that our tefillah is an avoida. It's an avoida. An avoida. Avoid in the Beis Hamikdash. If we would give it the chashivos that it deserves, and the appreciation, and the reality that it is, then a bow would be a bow, and a step would be a step, and everything would be precise. But we don't consider, we don't value it. It's just one of those things that we have to check off. Oh, I, I have to make sure I davened. Oh, I davened, I davened already. I already davened today. Did you daven yet? I didn't daven yet. I davened already. It's just something we have to put under the belt. But the Gemara tells us, La'avas Hashem Lekechem, Ula'avdoi B'cholavavchem, Ezahi Avoida, Shehi Belev. Tefillah is an avoida. It's a serious thing. It's really entering the Beis HaMikdash. When you wash your hands in the morning, don't let the, don't let the uh, opportunity slip by to recognize the Yivam Shem saying, Rabbi Yid! You're a kayin, you're a clergy, you have a very important job this morning. Rav Miller writes in his Sefer, and we'll end with this, and I heard him say this, I remember, on one of the last Thursday nights in his life. What's the concept of eating matzah on Pesach? He says a beautiful idea. Matzah has no chametz. Matzah is very similar to a carbon mincha. A mincha was only allowed to be eaten by... A kayin. When Kali Yisrael were taken out of Mitzrayim and they're being charged, Vi'atem Tiuli Mamlechas Kayhanim Begoy Kadosh, Hashem says, Yeah? I'll be ready in a minute. Hashem, Hashem says, Listen, 
I want you to appreciate and understand that you guys are koyhanim. And therefore, you know what you're going to eat? You're going to eat the food that koyhanim eat, which is matzah, which is like the karbe mincha. That's one of the ideas, that's one of the meanings of the karbe, of the mitzvah of matzah. So as we approach the Yom Tov of Pesach and the Yom Tov of Kabbalah Satorah after that, let's understand one of the central functions in our life is to view ourselves as professional Oivdei Hashem, full-time Oivdei Hashem, however we're occupied, whatever we do, whatever livelihood we have. But the Yibam Shem gives us a status that we have a tremendous avoida that's our responsibility, and the avoidas hayoim, the teos yadayim, and tefillah is an avoida mamish of entering the Mishkan, entering the Beis HaMikdash, entering the Kodesh HaKadoshim, may all of our tefillahs be in the Skabel Barachim and Bratim. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.